Hello and welcome back to the Fancy Wildcard Devi Show. The holidays are over. Phil is back with us, tanned, relaxed, excited for another week of work, Phil. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait. It's what I've come back to do. Good, good. I can uh, I could imagine you bathing in the sun rays while while you're away just fretting over what on earth I was going to do to the show by myself. But, um, well, we asked we asked in the podcast, were you listening? And I know firsthand that you certainly were. I was indeed. I thought you did a great job, Jack. Um, in fact, so much so that I messaged you straight afterwards saying that you've just about convinced me um, to sign up to my first C2C league. Um I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit more research. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that I'm going in fully equipped and armed um, with with a with a plan. Um, you give me lots to think about, and but yeah, I think I'm I think I'm feeling brave enough to give it a go now. I, I just need to find other beginners like me so I don't get absolutely mulled over on my first one. Oh, music to my ears! We're widening the pool. We're making C to C leagues bigger and wider reaching in the UK. I want to see it. I love it. Maybe I can be part yeah. of your uh, part of your prep arsenal as long as I'm not in the league uh, myself. I'm not, not helping you out in that case. Ah, but yes, the so we are back. Two of us here. The Ohio State bias is probably over. Uh, and we have a great episode lined up for you. We are missing Jordan tonight. Uh, we hope that he is doing well. But we will hopefully smash out the park a an episode all about trading in devi leagues so let's dive straight in we've got a load of fun things lined up for us uh, this evening we are going to look at some trade strategy some of our positional preference across wide receivers tight ends running backs quarterbacks what we like to do with with trading for those positions uh, we're going to rate some trades that we've seen go down. Some of them are our own trades, so uh, be as harsh as you want, Phil. Uh, we'll see how those go. And, of course, we'll hit our sell, hold, acquire as always. So let's get straight into that Devi trade strategy. And I'm going to ask Phil to, to kick us off talking about different value sets for Devi players compared to to NFL assets so is, is there like a set differential you have is there a, a set value however you assign value do you set numbers towards those players uh, how do Devi players measure up as a general rule against your NFL players yeah so there's so much that goes into this um first and foremost like ev everyone has a different outlook on a regular dynasty straight uh, some people like to go by gut feel. Uh, some people like uh, trust their gut to a certain extent, but then we'll want to check it up on some kind of trade calculator that exists to make sure they're not selling them to themselves short, make sure they're not asking for too much. And, you know, the, the, there's a whole host of strategies in between. And the the, the problem with Devi is that if, if you if you want that security and that comfort of a number to reassure you, it's a lot harder to come by because there's so much more projection. Um, so that no, there isn't really a set differential. Uh, I think it's widely agreed and accepted, and we've said before, I think on our intro episode, that in terms of trading, generally it's accepted um, that a Devi prospect, regardless of how talented they are, unless they are a true unicorn of a prospect, um, will be less of value or will hold less of value in a trade uh, than uh, an NFL player simply because the Devi player is nothing but projection. It can be well scouted. It can be, uh, you can be fair, fairly certain in your drafting. However, the long and the short of it is, is still a projection. Uh, that player is one year, two year. In the, in the case of like the incoming freshman class, three years minimum away from making your NFL roster. So if you're going to uh, deal in a trade that deals a Devi asset for an NFL asset, Ultimately, whilst the NFL asset might be older, um, not as long a shelf life, they're scoring you points that are going to help you win a championship. Um, and ultimately, that's why we play the game. Uh, you know, it, it can be difficult to lose those, the, you know, we've mentioned it before, those kind of Devi specs and, you know, 
uh, your scouting lenses. But ultimately, we want to win. And it's the players that score your points on a Sunday uh, slash Monday night um, that are going to get you those points. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I personally, I'm, I'm a mathematician by day. You know that I'm a math teacher. Uh, I like numbers. I, I, I trust my own gut in terms of putting a trade package together and evaluation. Um, however, I often like to just check by the numbers, knowing that um, knowing that I'm not selling myself short or over asking and scaring somebody away by being too eager. Um, and you know, each each source you go to for something like that is slightly different. But again, you will see a general a general perception that that I've kind of taken into how I approach my Devi assets. When you look at these calculators and you look at the evaluations, they sign uh, signs to future dynasty picks. Um, if you can, if you can look at your asset in a similar way to how you would look at a future Devi pick, uh, sorry, excuse me, a future dynasty pick that can go somewhere to giving you a rough idea as to the value. So for example, um, I'm looking at building a deal in one of my leagues at the moment. I, I'm, I'm weak at receiver, um, and I I like the look. I can I can see a prospective deal um, with somebody in the league who could do with um, effectively my fourth quarterback would be their super flex option. And I am looking at the way I can put together a haul for that player that would include Evan Stewart. Now, Evan Stewart, at the moment, we're projecting to be probably a top three to top five Devi pick next year. Uh, sorry, uh, start up rookie draft pick next year. Uh, all been well, you know, for his final season or what looks to be his final season at Oregon. Right now, that player, regardless of his talent, if you if you use, uh, say, Fantasy Pros, um, Dynasty Trade Value Chat, a top 325 pick, you can look at where that's valued in terms of points compared to all the dynasty players and give yourself an idea. If we find that inevitably a couple of quarterbacks, regardless of what we think about them at the moment, creep up on those rookie boards and Stewart looks like he's going to drop to five, well, then all of a sudden you probably see that the value of him at the moment, even though he's a highly lucrative kind of sought after player in the world of Devi, actually from a dynasty perspective, probably comes out at a late end first high-end second round pick um so yeah you, you're dealing with the here and now for the points and for the win um at the expense of selling it further down the road and i think you can keep making that argument for every year further back you're looking at trading a player the projection increases uh, therefore you know the value lessens in the same way that you would when you're trading say a 26 future dynasty pick absolutely and it I find it so difficult because I want to have that approach. But when you say, oh, let's look at our Devi players and where do they fit with our dynasty rookie picks next year or the year after, in my head, I immediately go, well, he's the 101, so he's worth uh, a lot. Um, yeah, absolutely. But obviously, we, we have to try and keep ourselves grounded, and that's that's the constant battle between being a, a college football fan and a Devi fan and knowing when to cash out, even if it's not at maximum value. Because, like you say, Evan Stewart could end up going in uh, non-superflex drafts. He could be the 101 pick in, in your rookie draft, and you might sell him at 102 value. But that's not a lose situation for you if what you trade him for is benefiting your NFL roster here and now. That's it. That's it. And that, and that's the way you've got to look at it. Like, you know, if you, and this, this goes back to the kind of methodology behind you drafting in your, in your Debbie picks, you good, good teams can, can draft well and trade those assets before they ever land on their Debbie, uh, before they ever land on their dynasty roster and their actual active kind of roster and keep building a win now team. Um, you don't have to sell that. You don't, you know, it's not like dynasty where you have to sell the farm to build a win now team. Um, but likewise, if you're, if you know your roster and, and you're honest and you can reflect and evaluate where you are in terms of your build, it's very easy as well um, to, sell vets for an absolute haul and really kind of accelerate a rebuild too yeah and i i guess that's another another 
drastic option is thinking that you this is the Devi is the cheapest you will get certain aspects like Marvin Harrison Jr. last year is the cheapest you're going to ever get him anymore you could have got Marvin Harrison Jr. still for quite a lot of you'd have to pay quite a bit but nowhere near what you've got to pay now and nowhere near what you're probably going to have to pay in a year's time and the dream is that you nail all of those trades and all of those Devi picks. But the reality, unfortunately, is that we don't hit 100% of the time. So having a, having too heavy a Devi squad and, and selling all of your NFL assets with the dream of a super team, is uh, it comes with, with a huge slice of risk. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think, and then the only other thing I wanted to say was, as, as you mentioned, like trade calculators are trying to put a figure to um, Devi trades against NFL players. It, it is difficult because lots of sites will have varying values. They will have experts in the NFL side and then people who are have an interest in the college side and the Devi side, but not necessarily experts. There are a few out there that uh, I do follow and, and would trust. But again, their values on those players really vary. So I think this is where the fun of Devi comes in, in that you have to put an, you could take that advice and you can look at places like uh, Campus to Canton. They have something called their C200 rankings where they do rank the top 200 players in NFL and college. So if you want to see where they have Caleb Williams ranked compared to other NFL quarterbacks that are already in the league, you can, you can go and do that. But obviously that's only one site. Uh, a great site but only one site so you have to take all of that with a pinch of salt and assign your own value to those players because you don't want to make a trade based on someone else's value that you regret immediately or or, or further down the line so. yeah absolutely absolutely yeah so i suppose then that just kind of leads us into um this idea of you know valuing your debut players and do Devi players kind of peak at a certain point in the season, Jack? Yeah, it's a really interesting question because I think Devi players tend to be at their highest value and they are probably the most tradable asset around the Devi draft, which tends to be a little bit earlier than your rookie drafts or your um, supplemental drafts for your NFL side. So I think picks or players become really valuable around the Devi draft. Now, when you get in season, as soon as the NFL season starts, your Devi player value drops a little bit because everybody, as much as people might say they're not win now, everybody has that hope for week one and week two. And, and even week three, if you're 0-2, there's still a chance to make the playoffs. So your Devi player values drop because people don't want to trade for them because it's a trade for them. You're giving up something on your NFL roster. So I, I think it's, it's quite similar to your rookie picks. Like you say, it, you have to value Devi players against rookie picks. I think the same can be said for the cycle of value for a, a rookie pick and a, and a Devi player. They, they, drop in value at the beginning of the season they start to pick up again uh, towards the back end of the season when certain players know they're not going to make the playoffs and therefore they're looking to sell their veteran players or sell their fringe players who only have a year's contract and a bit of insecurity on whatever team they're on and try and pick up devy picks or devy players to to build for the future and then they, they just keep increasing and increasing until the NFL draft and then the Devi draft, depending on obviously what year those players are eligible. If they are eligible the next year, their value just keeps increasing up to the draft. And peak value is, is the day of the draft, I would say. The day of the NFL draft is the time to sell your Devi players that are about to enter the NFL because the hype is there. Everybody believes that their favorite wide receiver or their favorite quarterback is going to be a first rounder but some of them are going to slip to the second round and and as soon as that happens the value is absolutely tanked that's the real it is like a one day pivot where your favorite running back is a fringe day one pick or is a solid day two pick and actually 
they go at the very end of the third round or even sneak into day three and suddenly they have no value whatsoever. Yeah. Nobody wants them. So if you want to trade away Devi players, I'd trade them away on the day before their NFL draft. And if you want to acquire Devi players, I'd do it the day after the NFL draft finishes when you can see which which players have, have dropped in value and managers are a bit desperate. Now, now is the time. Now is the time. We're, we're, we're in that. We're in that kind of smirk, smirk season around testing and combine numbers and things are done. The reports you start to see in the next week will either be ridiculous or fairly accurate. Now is the time to tune into your beat writers. And if I've got one advice for anybody before this NFL draft, right, is follow some Cowboys beat writers. And get a flavour for which running back that front office le- is leaning towards and which running back Jerry Jones wants. Because that is a player in advance of the Devi draft you could get for cheaper than you will get them post Devi draft. Because that running back is probably going to end up right now. You see a lot of mock um, rookie drafts that are going on, you know, on great shows um, and great pods out there. Loads of people making great content. Not many people are putting rookie running backs in the first round. Right, because what we're still looking at is we're doing mock drafts, but we're really looking at how we rank the players. What we're not doing is we're not talking landing spots because we don't know what they are and how that impacts where we choose. Ultimately, the running back that ends up at the Cowboys is going to get a workload, and that running back in the weeks uh, in the week between the NFL draft and your rookie drafts, the earliest rookie drafts kind of starting up is going to take a significant spike in their ADP. And you could get an absolute clip just by doing a little bit of research now. Who do you think that's going to be then, Phil? I am leaning, and this is this is no personal preference. I'm, I'm not a huge fan, but little bits of reading I've done suggest that they are going to be all in on Trey Benson just for the immediacy of his well-rounded skill set. Uh, I don't think he's got the most upside of the backs that are coming out. But he seems to be the fancy name at the moment. Um, you know, I'll, I'll keep looking at it. But you know, you could you could find if you if you if you were sitting on that kind of two or three to two or five range in the hope of drafting Trey Benson, you may well find that if he ends up at the Cowboys, he's gone, and you're gonna if you if you really do want him and it's a running back that you need, you might have to trade up to the one ten. But uh, hey, look, well, you know. That, that, that's where Devi kind of meets your rookie drafts and it all comes to that one big melting pot. And I suppose that leads to another nice little question as well, uh, Jack, that we got sent in by Elliot, who asked, which picks do you place more value on? Devi freshman picks or NFL supplemental rookie picks? Yeah, thanks, Elliot. This is one of my close friends and um, league mates uh in in quite a few leagues anytime i'm on a startup i just give him a little text and he's like yeah yeah go on then Um, but yeah devi's not his not his bag yet so an interesting question for someone who's played a little bit of devi but is still still diving deep so for me the devi freshman picks are much more valuable than the nfl supplemental picks just because there's it's a it's a whole pool that is open like those those devi freshmen no one's taken any yet unless you play in a league that allows you to pick high school players uh, early, which I think is even too extreme for myself. Then you've got the whole pool. So that 101 is the best player out of high school going into college that, that you can pick up. Now, don't get me wrong. There are supplemental rookie picks that slip through. There are, there are supplemental picks that slip through the net. So I've got a league where I uh, was in full rebuild. Well, let's just be honest. I just have a rubbish team. Have managed it a little bit poorly in the last year, and I've sitting there at one hundred and one. Jaden Daniels is available, so don't undervalue, don't undersell those Devi picks. But if I'm picking one, I, I want the Devi one hundred and one rather than the supplemental rookie one hundred and one. Absolutely, absolutely. No, that makes complete sense. Makes complete sense. And again, you, you're right. Like. It, in, in the next section, we're going to have a little look at uh, positional values, etc., and how to maybe target uh, building your Devi and Dynasty squads um, dependent on position. 
Um, and, you know, we can we can follow up quite nicely with some talk about where the best spots are to draft some of those position groups. So, yeah, it's a great question, Elliot. Absolutely. Yeah, and let, so let's dive into that. We're going to look at uh, our positional preference for certain roster places on your um, Devi squad. So, Phil, kick us off. What are you doing at wide receiver and tight end? What do you like to do with with forming a Devi squad, forming a, an NFL roster around these two positions? Split them in two. Let's not treat them as the same entity, okay? Uh, we'll start with tight end. Tight end is an absolute lottery, okay? As far as, as, far as that goes, first and foremost, not as many of them get drafted, um, which makes it harder to spot the early production and very few college tight ends produce early unless they're absolute unicorns like a Brock Bowers. Um, they tend not to contribute until later in their college careers. Um, so, you know, we, we've seen big names and some people, or lots of people I'm still in leagues with, um, are getting over the burn of Eric Gilbert, um, who was very highly drafted and now... I mean, is he still bouncing around somewhere? Is he transferred again? Is he going for another shot at any kind of Devi relevance? Um, I think he's been kicked out of every college, so not sure. Not sure know, he's eligible. Like, so, so for me, unless it's an absolute unicorn like a Pitts or Bowers, I'm tending, unless it's a very late round pick or an extra pick I've acquired, I'm tending not to spend my capital on Devi tight ends in my Devi drafts. Um, you can get them in, there, there will be earners in your league, like no matter what we say about the depleted rookie draft, there will be earners who just don't see the value in it. They'll see it in the crap shoot and what's left and be interested in him from that pool. Well, they're the earners that you target. And if you're going to make a trade deal with those earners, you look at getting one of those um, picks as a throw-in. You look at getting one of those uh, depleted rookie draft picks as a throw-in because the, you know full well the owner doesn't value them. And that is where I would target my tight ends. Okay, so if you just take last year, for example, um, in the depleted rookie draft, in almost everyone I was in, Sam Laporta was available, Dalton Kincaid was available, Jake Ferguson, Luke Musgrave, and they have all gone on to secure day one or two draft capital in the actual NFL draft, and subsequently were all top two picks in the rookie deplete, uh, top two round picks in your rookie depleted draft as well. You know, Laporta and Kincaid in particular look like they're going to be top five dynasty tight ends now for the next 10 years potentially. Um, and they were available with picks that were likely throw ins in trade values and trade negotiations between owners. Um, so for me, you know, do your scouting, do your homework, watch the tape, but hold tight, wait for the senior breakouts. Um, you know, a couple of names this year, Cade Stover, um, Eric Hall, you know, are guys that are going to be available in your rookie depleted drafts and well worth a, a spot to fill out your roster. Um, you know, well worth the draft capital and the gamble in those drafts rather than I won't say wasting a, a Devi pick, but gambling a Devi pick on them actually turning into something viable as a dynasty option. I think um, I think that's the the key word, isn't it? Gamble. The risk is so high with tight ends. Even you mentioned Carl Pitts. He he was available in most supplemental drafts because he didn't break out until his final season at Florida. And you've listed a load of tight ends that came in last year. You can add Trey McBride to that the year before. Yeah, absolutely. And that's your, that's your potential. I mean, it seems to be consensus dynasty tight end one and tight end two, Sam Laporta and Trey McBride, and you could pick them up second round of a supplemental. Well, well, Sam after Sam Laporta's first round draft capital, he he did pretty well. Uh, second round draft capital, he he yeah. ended up going a bit higher, but even so. But but even even then, like with the best one in the world, and you know even some of the most accurate scouts who liked his tip did not perceive. Um, the breakout, he just he just hit that perfect sweet spot, didn't he? Uh, between talent, situation, system, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I, would, I would I would rather wait on seeing where they end up and make those picks from there. 
Yeah, I agree. And we pre- we preached an overvalue draft uh, landing spot for tight ends, and then uh, I think I overdid that because as uh, as TJ Hawkinson moved on and Sam Laporta moved in, I, was, I tried to not get too carried away, but I still <laughs> did pick him up. I still did pick him up, so I, I'm quite well. It's worked that. out pretty well, hasn't well, it's it? Worked it's well. worked out pretty well. Um, right. Yeah, kick us off then, wide receivers. Wide receivers now. What what let's just go back to tight ends for a second. What one of the issues is the reason it's such a gamble is there are so few spots on a roster that are designated to tight ends, right? Whereas the flip side of that, uh, and again, like with your tight ends, you've you've got a receiving tight end, but there'll also be a roster roll spot for a blocking tight end in the NFL who does nothing for their fantasy team if for your fantasy team. Wide receivers, though, we're seeing this year and last year. I mean, this year's crop is exceptional. Like right? that's kind of widely accepted in terms of people who will make roster relevant contributions for you. But last year as well, in the second and third rounds, there were a lot of good wide receivers drafted. Go back as far as Amon Ra St. Brown, like high, highly rated, but then slipped in the draft. But you've got a fourth round pick who's now a top five wide receiver in Dynasty. Like these guys, there's lots of them getting drafted, unlike the tight ends. Therefore, my advice to you is draft, draft, and draft again. Take as many swings of the bat. Do your homework, okay? Watch the tape. Draft as many as you can get your hands on because they make great trade bait. Do the scouting. Watch the tape because you know the ones ultimately that are the real gold mines and that you want to keep. Um, But then... With a surplus of numbers, I'm looking to add them into trades to get myself, you know, lucrative veterans that can still contribute to my NFL roster. Yeah. Or I acquire love additional picks. Yeah. And and this is another one. We're on the same page. The having a plethora of wide receivers makes you the king in your league for trades because that is the position that people want to trade for. People don't want to trade for running backs because it's risky. People want to trade for wide receivers. And if you've got an abundance of top level and and second level and third tier wide receivers, you've got the luxury of being able to trade them away uh, for the things that you want and the things that the positions you need. And having just talked about tight ends, if, if you want to trade for a tight end, you avoid drafting them completely this is where you can get a tight end for an absolute steal. You get that tight end and a truckload on top for one of your wide receivers. And if you've got seven of them, you're, you're not going to play all seven in a week unless you're in a very, very, very deep league. And and already, you know, you know the ones that you firmly believe are going to make the biggest difference to your rosters when they reach the NFL. And... If I'm going to get rid of that one, well, I'm not. They're, they're, they're not going to be one that I'm offering. But the guy that rounds out the bottom end of my roster or maybe at best fills a flex spot, that's going to get me uh, potentially some very nice pieces. So, uh, yeah, keep swinging the bat. Take as many as you can. They make great trade bit. Excellent. And here's a, here's a curveball question to throw your way. With wide receivers, who are you more likely to trade a 2024 wide receiver who's entering the league now like a Troy Franklin or a 2026 wide receiver or 2027 wide receiver like Carnell Tate which which of those players are you looking to keep on your Devi squad and which one are you looking to trade away uh so so for me now would be the time where for, for me, a 2026 player like Kyle Tate is still going to acquire value and still going to add value. And if I do decide that that's a player I want to sell, I don't feel like I'm selling at the peak yet. I would be taking a hit on that player because he's not quite shown just what he can be. Troy Franklin, on the other hand, uh, we now know where he's expected to be drafted. Um, we'll soon know the situation he's going to land in. And right now, because we, we mentioned earlier, selling on that future projection, uh, lessens the value of that peak potential peak piece. I would rather move on from a Troy Franklin now um, and and recycle. If I don't think it's going to be a, un, unless I was confident that Troy Franklin was going to make my roster, my active roster a lot better. 
now would be the time where I'm going to cut my losses, get rid, recycle, acquire more picks, maybe get a, a slightly lesser piece that would fill that flex spot, deep roster spot, bench spot, um, but recycle, reinvest, retool. Excellent. Well, there you go. There's your advice for wide receiver trades. Let's move on to the running back position. And we're going to split this one because I know that Phil and I have slightly different approaches to the running back position. So I'll start with what I do with running backs. What I like to do with Devi is basically avoid Devi running backs, partly because the injury risk is so high. Uh, and the tread on the tyres that running backs take in college varies so wildly that someone who comes in as a freshman might get a starting job, which is really exciting, and they're going to start scoring touchdowns, they're going to churn up some yardage, their profile is going to grow. But if they are starting for three years in an offence that runs them again and again and again, their lifespan in the NFL the odds of their lifespan being five, six years is shortened a little bit. Um, I also think that I am personally better at, at analysing wide receivers, so I, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and try and invest in those in those players with my Devi picks. Uh, again, similar to tight ends, only a few running backs are true three down studs for your NFL roster. Only one is on the field at any time. So if it's not a run play and your running back isn't very good at catching the ball out of the backfield, he's not going to earn you any points. Uh, so I personally try and avoid running backs in Debbie drafts, and I like to pick them up in the second round of any supplemental rookie drafts. That's where I am looking to just take any running back that got drafted really in any round. I, I, it, the NFL has shown us that they will trust undrafted free agents. Like James Robinson on the Jacksonville Jaguars was a, an was unbelievable league league, yeah, league winner. His his value increase from what you paid for him was, you know, you paid pennies and you you got millions. And yeah, so absolutely. The NFL is saying they don't they don't trust running backs particularly highly they're not getting paid that well after their first rookie contract so i i'm kind of treating them the same way yeah and 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 that makes sense now that there is there is one part of this where we are very similar and that is um in terms of making sure we get out on them at the end of that first contract i know we had a conversation mm -hmm. off air about the fact that um, you know, that hashtag three to four year window for a running back once they make the league. Um, I, I'm i looking to get out on running backs, even even highly acquired and high capsule running backs at the end of that first contract. Let someone else deal with them when they start to break down. And whilst I can still get out on a high and make a return. Um, but that being said, I like to make sure that in terms of the running backs that I've got, I will target highly sought after recruits um you know i will target dare i say it the nick singletons um i will target um the justice haynes in the 26 class the cedric baxters the elite prospects um because if i get a whiff that they're not going to make what i'm expecting them to do i will be able to sell high on name value um and reputation alone but likewise if they uh, are as good as advertised and they make the league um, I want to make sure that I've got them on my roster whilst they're young, whilst they're at the mo potentially most durable um, and making sure they're making a name for themselves that I'm getting the best of their production before I can still sell um, as they kind of come to that fourth, fifth year uh, of the contract. Get out, get out high and again, restock, reload. Restock and reload. That's going to be your catchphrase, Phil, for this podcast. Restock, it is indeed. reload win the championship year after year um the i had an interesting thought to pose this question and i don't know how it's going to go down if you are because if you're in the opposite position so you own or not even the opposite position you've got or you had someone like jonathan taylor just before his contract extension mm -hmm. are you ever trading a high-end NFL running back purely for 
Devi assets? Or are you always wanting an NFL piece in return? I think that depends on what you've got in your pipeline in terms of what's going to replenish your roster the following year. If I don't have a meaningful contributor that's going to fill that gap the next year, then I want an NFL piece back, even if it's a lesser piece. If I can, if I can make that, um, if you know, if I can target somebody else's elite Devi running back, um, but acquire a James Connor as part of that deal, um, someone who's serviceable, um, relatively reliable in terms of an RB two spot, then I'll I'll make that deal all day. Excellent. That is what I thought you would say. And I guess I, I didn't phrase that question particularly well, because that is exactly what that is my strategy. If I have those running backs and I want to sell them before or as or almost as they sign that second contract, I want to pick up an elite Devi asset. It could be a running back, but never purely that Devi asset. I want an NFL piece as well. Like you, like we say, they're those Devi assets are not scoring you points week on week, and your roster is only so big. So you need somebody in there. Um, you you would have to points. put. I suppose I suppose the key thing there is never say never, but you would have to put me a hell of a package together. Um, yeah, it's the type, it's more than the type one package that's going to make yeah, and it's, it's going to make someone's eyes water to part with that many elite Devi picks in one go. Fab. Well, now you know what you need to do if you want to trade uh, trade all your Devi assets to fill. Good luck. The final position, we're going to look at quarterbacks. And I'm going to take this one because I have two categories, basically, for Devi quarterbacks. There are the hyped quarterbacks and the unknown quarterbacks, which is obviously a very complex name and strategy that I've come up with. Nobody could ever ponder what those mean so your hyped quarterbacks are the ones coming in that are five star rated that have all the buzz about starting as freshmen or going into room where they know they're going to start in year two i want to sell those hyped quarterbacks before they hit the field i don't want the risk of those quarterbacks hitting the field and not living up to reputation exactly their spiral can be so quick and their spiral is final dj yongalele burn me so bad and we've mentioned this in in previous podcasts but taking him at the 102 i think in a devi startup after spencer rattler who's kind of salvaged a bit of his reputation but dju hasn't and he's transferred again and he's gone to florida state and i can't trade him for anything and he's worthless at this point in time. My fingers are crossed so much for his season at Florida State to get him drafted somewhere to be a backup because, yeah, the, the downward spiral has just continued and continued. So those hyped quarterbacks peak in value for me before they hit the field, and that's when I want to get out. I would rather be wrong on a quarterback prospect but have got out at a place at a value that I'm happy with, then hold on for them to them too long and and get burned again like this DJU trade. So two players I am selling right now are Arch Manning, which we've covered in a previous podcast, and Shador Sanders. The hype is high. They're preseason, so nobody's thrown a pass yet. But this season could be really messy for Shador Sanders. Colorado and a I'm not in the bright, shiny place that they were four games into last season. And Arch Manning, his hype is just going to build and build. I'm selling Arch Manning as soon as he hits the field. If if Quinn Ewers gets injured this season, Arch Manning is on Which the trade block. He will. <laughs> he, or, he, he tends to. That's the moment that I'm selling Quinn Ewers. Uh, that's just, well, I'm also selling Quinn Ewers, but that's the moment I'm selling Arch Manning. Um, the unknown quarterbacks, they are the ones that I am looking to hold. So players who haven't got quite the hype of a DJ Lagway or Dylan Rayola, someone like Aiden Childs, who's now found himself at um, Michigan State, 
or Lenoris Sellers, who is at South Carolina. Players that have come in with a little bit less hype. They have a real shot at starting uh, at those colleges and and they will get quite a lot of focus because they'll be one of the most talented players on their team. I want to keep them until their final year or until their pre-NFL draft year. And then I'm either going to trade them away just before the draft or I'm going to keep them on my roster because their value increase is enough for me to justify them flaming out, if that makes sense. Like you're picking up yeah. Aiden Childs in the fourth, fifth round of a Devi draft. I don't. I can set that pick on fire, if I'm perfectly honest. Like if Aiden Childs turns into an NFL quarterback, I have won the lottery there. If he flames out the league in a year, I've not lost too much. So those are the quarterbacks that I want to have on my Devi roster. I want to have sorted my NFL quarterbacks in the NFL draft. No, it makes complete sense. Um, and I find personally people obsess over finding that next young dynasty quarterback, the, the one that's going to, you know, be the guy, you know. And obviously, you mentioned a moment ago this year's guy that people are hyping up massively is DJ Lagway. Um, we've obviously got Caleb Williams coming into the league this year, Jaden Daniels. These guys that are, people are, are now giving an absolute steal to try and get. Um, I'm happy to let them do that. And and I'm happy to take vets. Um, and I will overdraft wide receivers like we talked about before. And I will target vet quarterbacks. Give give me a Kirk Cousins. I can have Kirk Cousins manage my roster with young playmakers around him. Um, a Jared Goff, when he was well out of favour two years ago, and now all of a sudden he's seen a huge spike and resurgence. Um but give, give me those guys who I know are going to start every week, score meaningful points, um, and let other people scrap about those QBs. I might, again, I've said previously, if I can acquire any extra picks in trades, um, if I can have target second round uh, Devi picks as a, as a throw in, as an extra, that's where I will take my extra swings. I'll use the extra picks I acquire to pick up a quarterback. Um, and you know, if again, if you do your work right, that's a quarterback that if it's looking great in a year's time, I'll hold on to my roster. Um, I've done that quite a bit recently with Carson Beck. Um, but if I get the feeling that he's going to flame out or it's not going to go, I'll try and sell. Um, or alternatively, um, you know, at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, similar to your idea with Aiden Childs, um, it was a pick I acquired, it was an extra, it wasn't my own capital to start with, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yeah, I, I really like that. And I think Carson Beck's a really good example of someone who's a perfect hold because we know that he fits in this system. We know that the system works to his strengths. We know that Georgia are going to be successful this year throwing the ball. So his his value hasn't peaked and it's, and it's not going to decrease unless he gets a, a significant injury which we can't predict so that's it Trab. all right uh, if we if we have a little look then we 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 opened up um x this week twitter we we encourage people to get in touch with us ask us some questions uh particularly regarding trades um and the good the good folks got back to us uh the first one uh came from the gaffer uh, came from Kev at the Dynasty Mind. Um, and Kev asked Jack, um, which 2025 eligible asset are you pivoting away from? So if I kind of go first and feel free to shout any names that you're desperate to get on that I miss. Um, I Listen, it, it's well established now. I've written Nick Singleton down. Um, um, but, but let's be clear. It is not because... I don't rate Nick Singleton. I think he's just fine. I think he will go on to be an NFL running back. He'll make a roster next year. Um, but I still think getting out on him now, I think he's going to be one of the pack. I think this next running cl uh, back class is so deep um, that you could sell him now and still sell him as, uh, in some people's eyes, the 101 as far as running backs go. Um when the reality is there are going to be five, six, seven backs uh, that depending on skill set, depending on your flavor, depending on landing spot, could all end up being better NFL contributors than him. 
but you could still cash out like he is the be all and end all. Um, so that that's why he's there, not because I don't think he's a talented player, uh, but just because I think you can get more than what his eventual worth will be. Um, but then I've also, funnily enough, you've just mentioned should uh, Sanders and Quinn Ewers. They are two quarterbacks that I am looking to get out on before it's too late. I think you uh, referred to Shadur Sanders as what, uh, as your cell a few weeks back because you did not want to be left holding the trash. Um, and that that kind of mantra and that phrase has stuck with me. Um, and I would definitely put Quinn Ewers in there as well. Um, and I'll throw one more in after watching some spring game highlights or oh, lowlights in this instance from the weekend and threw, uh, throw Drew Aller in there as well. Um if I can get rid of any of those names at the moment for people who I know are going to be clambering for quarterbacks, then yeah, I'm going to get out on them as soon as I can and take what I can before the value plummets. Yeah, I I don't have anyone to add because you've named two of my uh, absolute pivots there in Quinn Ewers and Shadur Sanders. I think maybe we're getting too passionate about the people that we want to get rid of because we're both gaining a reputation here. <laughs> Yeah, perhaps, but perhaps. But it comes, but it comes from like what you've got to understand is like, and I, and I say this when I'm speaking to people about you know kind of regular dynasty as well. The 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 player the players I'm talking about like, I I try and remove any any attachment to the player themselves. Like I I like Nick Singleton's tape. There's things that he does well, um, and there's a reason he was so highly recruited and highly touted. Like, but people. People drafted him at that kind of 101 spot in the hope that he would be the next Bijan Robinson because Bijan just kind of entered the league uh, and was blowing things up. And you, so you came on the back of two Devi 10, sorry, excuse me, Dynasty 101 picks in Brees Hall and Bijan. And people were like, right, who's that next one? It's going to be Nick Singleton. He, he'll be fine. He just won't be that, in my opinion. But whilst people still hold the opinion that he's going to be, you can make profit. And if I want to make profit, that's profit that I can reinvest in players for my NFL squad or reinvest in Devi picks and take more swings at the bat and rebuild and reload. Again, I've used that phrase, but that's just the way you've got to look at it. Stocks and shares rather than that kind of personal attachment. Hashtag rebuild and reload. Let's get that ready on the draft for the tweet. Yeah. There we we go. I was going to say, we're going to rename the episode. Yep. Absolutely. We have got a couple of really good questions from Optimistic Vikings fan as well. A really fun one to start with. Ashton Jonti or Amarian Hampton? Nice and simple, Phil. Yep. Um, pick your flavour. This this just comes down to personal choice. They, they are, for example, uh, two backs that I have rated higher than the guy we've just mentioned. And the, the reason being um, is I think they're, they've shown more on the college tier. Uh, very, very different prospects. One will run round you, one will run through you. Um, it depends how you like your running backs. I don't think there's a bad choice between them. Yeah, I love them both. I'm taking Amari and Hampton. I think the calibre of competition and the size and strength of that man just edges it for me. Um, slight concerns that there are rumours Hampton might enter the transfer portal. Um, and yeah, he's he's not going to catch many balls out the backfield, or at least he hasn't he hasn't shown it so far. So a bit of a murky final year in college if he transfers, um, but hopefully he stays put. Absolutely. The the next question from uh, optimistic Vikings fan is one that is an excellent question, but one we've kind of half answered and one that we will answer in the future. So he's asked, who are your top freshmen at each position? So in our quarterback review episode, we kind of went through this and we, I think over, over the three of us, we, we consensus said you can have DJ Lagway as your 1A and Dylan Rayola as your, your 1B. Uh, and we are going to book in a, a freshman running back and a freshman wide receiver show. Although the, we don't really need the wide receiver show. It, it's Jeremiah Smith uh, and the Ohio State bias is back. Is back but with with good reason on that one. I'll I'll give you that. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't think that one is in doubt. Um, in regards to the running back show, we will get there. Um, we promised we would. We've been promising for weeks that that's one we'll do. Obviously, lo looking looking at high school tip isn't always easy to get hold of. However, um, Brandon Lejeune at Devita Dynasty is doing a, a 2027 uh, 
NFL draft class, the kind of new freshman recruits. He's doing a film series at the moment. If you get the chance, go and check them out on his YouTube. They are well worth it. Uh, hashtag free advertising. Um, but he he put me on to um, and has been talking a lot recently about Nate Fraser, um, who Fraser Fraser, uh, who's gone to Georgia. Uh, he's a freshman running back at Georgia. Uh, his film breakdown of him has me convinced that I am going to be going out and trying to target shares of him in Devi drafts this year. Uh, really, really good tip. And he looks like, uh, he, you know, going to Georgia, he's going to have to bide his time. Obviously, Trevor Etienne's there. Uh, Andrew Paul has just entered the portal, but he's technically on uh, on roll still. You've got Branson Robinson, if he can ever keep himself healthy. Um, but obviously, there's a stable of backs at Georgia. Um, he will have to wait his time, but he certainly looks like a talented young man. So uh, I would just throw his name out there now and encourage you to go and watch that video uh, on Brandon's YouTube page. Excellent. There's your sneak preview for our running back show. Get ahead of even us in your scouting. Right. We're at that time. We're going to have a look at some recent Devi trades and give you our thoughts on them and, and why we like which side. If I'd been better prepared, I'd have pre prepared some slides that listed exactly what and how these trades went down. But we are going to have to ad lib it. So make sure you're, you're listening intently to what the trade is. So your first one, Phil, is a 14-team Superflex tight end premium league. Team A has acquired Joe Burrow and Pat Frymuth while trading away Garrett Wilson, Sam Laporta, and Tet McMillan. Ooh. Give me your thoughts on this okay. cross NFL college trade. Yeah, so obviously um, the big thing for me here, uh, whenever you look at these, is you've got to look at the league setup and the league scoring. Uh, 14 team super flex is the bit that jumps out to me straight away. We know that in a regular kind of 12 team super flex, that takes you down as deep in a lot of cases as your QB 24. And there ends up being the haves and have nots in terms of who you've got rostered at the quarterback position uh, to use in your super flex spot as well. Stretch that out to a 14 team. And although it looks like Team B are giving up an absolute haul in Garrett Wilson, Sam Laporta uh, and Tep McMillan, Tep McMillan is still a year away from being picked. Um, he looks like an exciting prospect. But what are you hoping? You're hoping at best he's going to be a Garrett Wilson. OK, um, the range of outcomes for him would have that as ceiling for me. Um, you put in Garrett Wilson in the deal who... You know, for all the talent, um, has yet to be able to put it all together because of a lack of stable quarterback play. But you are also getting rid of the, um, you know, dynasty tight end one in a tight end premium league. Um, but I still think Team A nicks it. And that is just purely because of the value of Joe Burrow in a 14 team super flex league. Um, you know, he's, he's a top 10 QB and that is worth its weight in gold. Yeah, it's a premium asset trade, this one. I really like, you've got to have stones to make this trade on either side. But you're right, that quarterback is just so valuable. And obviously, we don't have the, the context of other quarterbacks on your roster. Um, but it, it, Joe Burrow is, is such a valuable piece. As much as it pains me to, to go against the Garrett Wilson side, uh, I'm, I'm sticking with you on side A there. But I really like it. I like the cross, the cross Devi NFL roster trade. Um, speaking of which, we will go a straight one for one. Spicy Nicholas Singleton, Stefan Diggs. Pick your poison. Uh, right. Okay. So this comes down to you've you've got several factors at play. Uh, you've got the age of both players. You've got the positional value and longevity. Um, added with the just simpler the fact that we came back to earlier who's scoring you points now um, for that reason and that reason alone I'm going to take Stefan Diggs if Stefan Diggs gets another three years of production okay that's Nick Singleton's final year at college and two years in the NFL um, give me the known asset with the elite rookie quarterback 
Um, assuming that the vast majority of leagues now are either half point PPR or PPR, Stefan Diggs is going to get fed in that system. Um, they wouldn't have brought him in otherwise. They've brought him in to be a security blanket um, for CJ Stroud. Uh, in regards, you know, regardless of what you think of Nico Collins and Tank Dell, you know, Diggs has been brought across there to lead that room. Uh, we know he likes his targets and he sulks when he doesn't get them. Um, so, so, yeah, g- give me give me two to three more years of that elite wide receiver asset um, over a, a Devi running back, even if it's a highly rated and highly ranked one. Yeah, uh, it pains me to pick Stefan Diggs here because the character concerns when he doesn't get thrown the ball and the production decrease from the, the second half of last season with the elite uh, dynasty quarterback throwing him the ball or choosing not to maybe. I don't I don't love either asset, but you're right. I think Stefan Diggs has been brought into a Houston team that are seeing an opportunity open up for them earlier than they thought they would. And he's coming in to yeah, solidify and lead that wide receiver room. He's got a skill set that, that Tank Dell doesn't have. Uh, and Nico Collins doesn't hasn't quite grown into yet. I think Nico Collins could become something quite similar to Stefan Diggs. But but Diggs is going to lead that room. He's going to earn targets in the first two years. I think his value is just higher than Singleton. Honestly, if I made this trade, though, I, I'd be looking to sell Stefan Diggs straight away. <laughs> Yeah, again, re- yeah, flip it and go again. Absolutely. All right, uh, I'm going to ask you the next one, Jack. All right, I'm going to jump in here and I'm really going to test your fundamental beliefs, okay? We've we've preached um, the NFL asset over Devi Prospects. Okay, so uh, this trade went down. Uh, someone reached out to me and told me they'd seen this trade go in one of their leagues. 12-team, PPR, Superflex League. Straight up, one for one trade. Roma Dunze, um, obviously incoming rookie receiver this year, very highly rated. Or um, Jeremiah Smith, incoming freshman. So we're looking at three years out for his NFL potential um, at your beloved Ohio State. Um, come on, let's go, let's really test your beliefs. Can you practice what you preach? Yeah. Oh, you're really pushing my buttons there because I had that down as a question for you. Um, at least George's not here to hammer home the point because the the, the smart play, the the Devi play, the winning the championship play is to take Roma Dunes here in in this trade. His value has shot up in his final year of college, but that's held into the draft rumors, the tape says so much about who he is and what kind of receiver he is he is strong athletic he is going to be a lead x receiver for an nfl franchise there's rumors of top eight pick there are mock drafts with him going above malik neighbors in the nfl draft and whether that is 100 percent accurate or just 60 percent accurate He's going to be a first round pick. He's going to be a top 20 pick in the NFL. And that draft capital alongside the tape and the fact that he has shown that he can be the lead guy for a pass heavy offense means that he's he's who I'm taking in this in this pick. I'm not I guess I say that because I want to contrast him to someone like um Oh, well, am I completely mind blanking on the Chargers receiver drafted last year? Quentin Johnson. Quentin Johnson. That's because he's forgettable on the field as well as in my mind. Yeah, and the, I can't the difference. Him. I drafted him. Yeah, I, well, I kept away from him because his tape didn't justify his draft capital to me. Uh, his, his hands were just not there, whereas Roma Dunze's are. Now, Jeremiah Smith, his tape. In high school is electric, but again, it's against. It's again. I've got to. I, I'm not enjoying having to say the negatives here, but the negatives are more the principle, not the player. So the principle is agreed. It's high school tape against high school players. Some of those defenders are not even going to play in college, let alone in the NFL. 
the highlight tapes that we are seeing come out of spring camp are also incredible. Some of the catches he's made and the fact that he's lost his black stripe so quickly as an Ohio State player, I think it was nine days of practice, the fastest ever, certainly the fastest wide receiver at Ohio State to lose his black stripe, which is a real mark of you've earned your spot on this roster. So some freshmen don't do that until halfway through their first season. This is incredibly quick. And he is super talented, but he is too far away from the NFL for me to to pick him in this trade. Um, I'm sorry yeah. to make you do that. I'm yeah. sorry to make you do that. Uh, it hurts your heart, um, but you've used your head over heart. And, and I think... I think I have to agree with you. The the there are isolated incidences where if it wasn't a player of Roma Dunes' calibre, if it was um one of that next class of receivers, and again I'm trying to think of some names now, a Troy Franklin, a Xavier Worthy. I think I would be okay in that case holding the unicorn prospect. Um and riding it out and taking the rough with the smooth. But I think the fact that Roma Dunze is is so highly rated and is going to get the draft capital. I think, yeah, you've you've just got to let your head rule your heart there and, and make the smart play. Yeah, there's no point me being on here to help people with their Devi Devi rosters if I'm not going to stick by what they should be doing. Fair, fair. Fab, let's throw one that I don't want to answer because this is two of my favourite Ohio State wide receivers in there. I'm throwing this at you, Phil. So this is that situation that we spoke about. You've got a borderline elite, certainly top top two tier wide receiver in the NFL in Garrett Wilson, but you're trading him for two top Devi assets in Carnell Tate, wide receiver out of Ohio State, and Justice Haynes. What yep. are you doing here? What are your thoughts on this trade in 12-team PPR Devi League? <clears throat> Yeah, so this is this is one where let's look at the numbers. Let's let let's go down that route of trying to do this using a trade calculator to back up what your gut's telling you. Because immediately your your brain might be saying, Whoa, can I take and Justice Haynes? Now let's just bear in mind for a moment that they are likely round one Devi picks in 2026, not even 2025. So I am going to just float around and pull up some information. Let's use, let's use Fantasy Pros, okay? I'll, I'll try and find Fantasy Pros' uh, most recent trade value calculator. So where are we? Fantasy Pros. Fantasy trade value. Let's have a little look. Let's see how they rate first round picks two years from now. While you're doing that, let me wax lyrical about these players. So obviously Garrett Wilson was a first round pick to the New York Jets. And the interesting thing with him is that we could almost compare, we, we haven't got the statistics here, but if you are comparing two players from the same college, you can almost go side by side if the head coach is the same, if the system is the same, in which it came, in which it is in this case. They're both played at Ohio State under Ryan Day in a pass-heavy offense. What would Garrett Wilson's freshman stats say compared to Carnell Tate? So that's another line of inquiry i haven't done that research right now and uh, i'm pretty sure garrett wilson racked up a little bit uh, a little bit more game time than carnell tate but that's one way of of looking at assets if they're from a similar school or sim similar situation and um, justice haynes not had loads of field time but we know what school he's at we know what system he's in obviously new new coaching team there but it's a high profile school, a high profile recruit. Um, how are we getting on with those values? Yeah, good, good to go, mate. And that that's well filibustered for me. Um, so just looking looking at fantasy pros at the moment, fantasy pros have um a value attached to 2025 super picks, uh, super flex picks. They haven't even got values out yet for trading another year down the line. But to give you an idea, okay, um, 
this year's this year an early second round pick using the numbers that they assign and using their uh, their kind of scoring metric, a mid second round pick in the 2024 draft, they assign a value of 25 points. Okay, um, in 2025. That same valuation is used for a player who is valued in the 107 to 112 range. So straight away, you can see a 2024 mid-round second to the back end of a first-round pick, they're saying holding a kind of equivalent value. Okay? So throw that another year down the line, and it starts to give you an idea. Okay? If, if we say, for, for example, um, that Carnell Tate and... Uh, Justice Haynes both go in the 104 to 106 range in the 2026 draft. Those players at the moment are probably worth, by by Fantasy Pro's metrics, a late second to mid second round pick. Now, what that says to me then is, could you trade Garrett Wilson for two mid to late seconds? And I think all of a sudden the answer is no, of course not, mate. Have you lost your marbles? Right, which is why it just goes to show. That few, if you use that idea of, okay, but I'm p- pushing those picks down the road so they are worth less, right? And use that methodology to assign your value, then you can see that you'd probably need more for that. And to be fair, my gut said to me, give me the potential elite contributions at an NFL level from Garrett Wilson anyway. And all that does is reaffirm my thoughts. Absolutely. I think the number of things that have to go right for both Carnell Tate and Justice Haynes to reach the level that Garrett Wilson has already shown in the NFL means that this is a fairly one-sided pick, in my opinion. The value isn't just what Carnell Tate and Justice Haynes could be. You have to bake in the zero points and zero points that those two players will earn you for two years where Garrett Wilson gets Aaron Rodgers back this season and his ceiling is a top five wide receiver for your NFL fantasy. So, yeah, not as challenging a trade to analyse as as maybe we thought, but, but three elite prospects, like... Carnell it Tate is it, in the same sphere as Garrett Wilson was in his sophomore season. But it does make it really interesting, doesn't it? Because you, you have to t- take a step back and look at it because the the immediate um, the immediate lure and the appeal there is somebody feeling like they're getting two potentially elite assets. It's only when you stop to think about it that you go, well, hang on a minute, the maths ain't mathing. Uh, and, and from there, you can start to put it right. Um should we do one more? Let's do one more. One more. Okay. And the reason I like this one um, is because you have got two, um, well, one definitely elite, um, says the Ravens fan, um, and one potentially elite quarterbacks in the deal. Okay. So this last deal um, is 12 team super flex. Uh, for Team A, they uh, lo- are looking to acquire Lamar Jackson and wide receiver Michael Wilson. Currently, the Arizona Cardinals had a nice rookie season. Um, looks like he's going to be uh, a good player on that roster, even if he doesn't project to be the guy. Um, team B, on the other hand, uh, looking for Caleb Williams, Kyle Pitts, and then a flyer on rookie running back Jonathan Brooks. What do you think to that one, Jack? I love this trade and I love how many avenues this opens for us to chat about. Let's look at Jonathan Brooks. We mentioned the Dallas Cowboys looking for a running back. I think Jonathan Brooks would be a great player to land in that system. Someone who could go in the second round without his injury. He's clearly the RB1 in this class, but he did take it, get a significant injury halfway through the 2023 season so uh a, an upwardly trending prospect in my mind Kyle Pitts someone who is uh on the ba- on the look for a bounce back season um someone who honestly can't tank his value any further can he surely nah, a better quarterback easy. a better offensive system a better head coach 
Let's see. Let's see what happens with Kyle Pitts and Caleb Williams. Obviously, the most talked about prospect. Or, I mean, I say that actually, probably the least talked about because it's so accepted that he is the one hundred and one and he is the number one pick in the NFL draft. That everyone has kind of just moved on and more interested in talking about who might go number two. Um, so it's a really exciting potential there in that side of the trade. But Lamar Jackson is as elite a dynasty asset as you can get. His ceiling is the QB1 and the top scoring fantasy asset year after year after year. He has improved his passing style and mechanics and field awareness from that raw prospect we saw when he came into the NFL. And his threat with his legs and the number of touchdowns he scores running he's just I think where he is at is where Caleb Williams is striving to be I don't think there's much much higher a ceiling that Caleb Williams can reach above the level that Lamar Jackson is at if that makes sense there's not much there's not much breathing space above Lamar Jackson in fantasy football that's not saying that he's going to be the QB one every year and Caleb Williams could outscore him, but there's what are you striving for? Your, your quarterback won last year games of 50 plus points is just a, a league winner. Lamar Jackson is now Michael Wilson, take him or leave him. And I mean, that's a throw in. The Arizona, Arizona Cardinals don't have any wide receivers, but they're quite likely to draft or trade for some. Um, so he's kind of a non-entity really in this trade, but Lamar Jackson is just too valuable for me to trade him away. I I see both sides to this, um, and I'm going to try and build a counter-argument, not necessarily saying that's what I do. I'm just going to try and build the counter-argument. Um, the, the the way I truly look at this one is um, that Family Guy skit of what's in the mystery box. It could be a book, you know. K- Caleb Williams could be, you know, is like opening the mystery box. Um, in there could be Lamar Jackson. He could be Lamar Jackson, or it could be something else. But it could be Lamar Jackson. Like, how much extra does Kyle Pitts count? in terms of filling that void in potential value and does it make the risk worth taking? I'm going to just throw in there that Kyle Pitts still has that elite upside that we drafted him for. It's not his fault. He was stuck in that God awful system with Arthur Smith. Um, And when you look at current ADP, like there are, there are drafts happening where at start of drafts where Caleb Williams is going before Lamar Jackson. Um, and maybe, maybe just maybe you could make the argument when you're getting Jonathan Brooks in there as well, uh, who, you know, touch wood, he returns to full, um, you know, what he was showing us uh, at Texas prior to his injury. Maybe that juice is worth the squeeze on the upside of all three players. Um, but again, you know, I'm not saying necessarily that's what I do. I'm just trying to create that counter argument. I can, I can see why some people would go the other way. Yeah. I can see that. I think all three of those players, Caleb, Pitts and and Brooks, have arguably more value as standalone trade pieces. I just wonder, can you get better value by trading Caleb Williams on his own, trading Kyle Pitts on his own and and maybe trading Jonathan Brooks on his own? That's where maybe I like that side of the the trade. Um, As the Lamar Jackson owner, I'm not selling him for that, but yeah. A good a good package to test to test the Lamar Jackson Absolutely. Fab. Right, Phil, we are running on. We are just so interesting and we have so many things to talk about. So let's finish the show with a quick sell, hold, acquire. Uh let you I'll let you go first. Cool. Yeah, short, sure, sweet. Um I am going out to acquire Richard Young. Okay, Richard Young is a redshirt freshman running back at Alabama. Um, no home bias at all. Um, but listen, I, I watched I watched the spring game on Saturday night, just gone. Um, and 
Richard Young almost became the forgotten man last year. Like the, there's a pipeline and a log jam of talent uh, in the running back room at Alabama. Every year upon year, it gets turned out and turned over. Um, but he was a five-star recruit, somewhat lost behind the hype uh, with Justice Haynes. But my goodness, he made the most of, it, most of his snaps on Saturday. Um, he looked strong, physically imposing. Um, and he, you know, look, he's, he's going to have to wait for his chances, but that's totally normal. Uh, Justice Haynes waited for his chance uh, and will only be mixed in the rotation this year with Jan Miller. Um, Roy Dell Williams moved on, which clears up one spot, but it's not uncommon for backs at Alabama to have to wait. Um, you know, Najee had to wait his turn. Josh Jacobs had to wait his turn. Before that, other people had to wait behind Derrick Henry. Uh, you know, a stable of backs like Alvin Kamara actually transferred out because they were stuck behind such talent. You know, it's not uncommon. But the cream rises to the top and this kid looked good. And um, I think right now, if he's not taken, there's a, pros there's a chance that somebody will have bitten on him because they saw a five-star recruit um, last year that's at Alabama. So someone might have gambled on him, but potentially not. If he's available, check your leagues. If he is available, he is definitely worth a mid to late round pick this year because the cream rises to the top. And I think his price is only going to go up with the more exposure he gets. Love it. I'm gonna it's a double acquire this week, and it's a similar reason. So the, the spring games, we're always told don't overreact to spring games, especially for college fantasy football and for Devi. Um, but we're not overreacting to that superstar breakout performance. It's seeing those green shoots of a role being available and making the most of that opportunity rather than someone who uh, breaks a run for 85 yards because the defender slipped over. So my pick is Colby Young. He's someone who has transferred into Georgia as a wide receiver from Miami. He's a strong, big-bodied receiver. He had an imp a really impressive catch to move the chains on third down in the spring game, and then he caught a touchdown, a short yardage touchdown, which is kind of what we hope he is going to be for this Georgia offense, someone who's going to be an outside threat, uh, an end zone weapon, someone who is going to continue his consistent performance from Miami. I mean, I like the Hurricanes offense last year was, was pretty dire, but Colby Young was consistent and he had at least two receptions in every game. And obviously two receptions doesn't sound like much, but in the number of times that, passes were caught in that Miami offense Two every game is pretty good. So yeah, he racked yeah. up 563 yards and five touchdowns in a down season. He's in a better system. He's got a better quarterback throwing him the ball, a much more reliable quarterback throwing him the ball uh, and just a better opportunity for a breakout year. So I am acquiring Colby Young. Love it. And Jordan will have to give us his pick next time. Absolutely. That will do us for this week. Thank you for sticking with us a bit longer, but hopefully you have gained some really valuable insight and uh, applicable trade strategy for your Devi leagues. If you have any questions on the back of it, please hit us up at Wildcard Devi on X and follow the whole Wildcard crew at Fancy Wildcard on X and YouTube. And we will see you again in two weeks' time. Cheers. Bye.